Mahnmal is a German word meaning a monument that serves as a reminder of a tragic event and a warning that the event should not be allowed to occur again. I have chosen this word not because the Holocaust is associated with the events of the Second World War and the actions of the Nazi party in Germany, but mainly because of its unique meaning. We have no word in English that expresses both memory and warning. A Mahnmal reminds us of terrible things that have occurred in the past, but also warns us that they might happen again in the future, if we're not careful. Indeed, since the murder of six million Jewish men, women and children that we call the Holocaust, there have been further genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. Even now, in 2021, organisations around the world, including the International Criminal Court, are debating whether or not the treatment of the Muslim Uyghur population in China, happening right now, should be classed as genocide. Perhaps simply remembering what has already happened isn't enough. Perhaps we need a Mahnmal. What is genocide? Genocide means the deliberate killing of a group of people with the aim of completely destroying it. This could be a whole nation or an entire ethnic group. When we talk about the Holocaust, we are usually referring to the policy in Nazi Germany of eradicating the Jews of Europe. Although there were similar Nazi policies for singling out LGBTQ individuals, disabled persons, Roma gypsies, and Jehovah's Witnesses. But what we call the Holocaust was not a random idea thought up by one insane individual. As is mentioned on the Holocaust Memorial Day website, genocide does not just take place on its own. It's a steady process which can begin if discrimination, racism, and hatred are not checked and prevented. The point is, lots of other people are usually involved. Thousands of other people. Ordinary people who, for one reason or another, have begun to believe that a specific group are to blame for their problems. That they are bad, and that they do not deserve to be protected. That in fact, they should be got rid of, or even killed. Whilst Adolf Hitler and his Nazis had a big part to play in the Holocaust, they were able to do the terrible things they did by taking advantage of the natural instincts of ordinary people. Their fears, their hatred for who they see as their enemy, and their willingness to destroy or watch that enemy be destroyed on their behalf. It is my view that the best way to respect the victims of such terrible events is to recognize that we are not immune from the forces that can lead ordinary people to hate one another, to blame groups of people for society's problems, and even to accept that removing them is a legitimate solution to those problems. A vaccination against hate. How do we prevent ourselves from going down this dark road? Part of a solution would be to understand a bit about how these things happen in the first place. Broadly, genocides do not occur while people have sympathy for the victims. As soon as people stop feeling a connection to other people, they care less about what happens to them. This commonly happens through conspiracy theories and a process called dehumanization. Dehumanizing is when target groups are described as less than human. Many people do not feel sympathy for the bugs they squash in their homes, and so when words like swarm and infestation are used to describe people, it removes their humanity in the eyes of others and makes it easier to ignore their suffering. Conspiracy theories depict groups of people as evil plotters who want to control us or take over the world. People who believe these theories think that they are the victims themselves and that destroying the other group is a defensive act. Conspiracy theories about Jews had existed for centuries before the Second World War. Whilst a fictional secret society of Jews was blamed for many of Germany's social and economic problems long before the first half of the 20th century. Whilst millions of Jews were being murdered in death camps, many ordinary Germans thought that their government was protecting them from a dangerous enemy. UK newspapers have recently described migrants to the UK as swarms and floods. Anti-Semitic, that's anti-Jewish, conspiracy theories are still spreading in Europe. Even politicians, including the Prime Minister, have been criticised for entertaining theories about super-powerful, super-rich Jews. People are still blaming individual ethnic groups for our society's complex problems. We can see the seeds of genocide in our daily lives, in our society right now. The attitudes and social problems that enabled the Holocaust haven't gone away. And in fact, remembering the Holocaust, being mindful of it, actively does something to prevent these problems from getting worse. 
genocide evolves from how we treat each other, how we see each other and respond to each other, what private thoughts we have about each other. Therefore, I suggest that whilst we memorialize the events of the Holocaust and subsequent genocides today, we not only remember the loss and pain of events past, but make a pledge for now and the future to recognize the part we all play in preventing genocide. Whenever we see a newspaper headline dehumanizing a group of people, or when somebody says something racist or blames a whole group of people for problems that are most certainly far more complex, to take note of our own feelings. Of course, it's okay to feel angry when somebody does something to upset us. It's natural to want them to go away or even to hurt them back. But before we say anything, before we take action, to think about the power we have as ordinary people, to think about the power we have to influence others, to think about what happens when people choose to act on their hate.